Carl, thank you. Let's bring in Peter Kern, uh, CEO of Expedia. Thank you for joining us on Squawk on the Street. Thanks for having me, Seema. Good to see you. Listen, a solid quarter, but the street really seems to be focused on your quarterly gross bookings, which did come in about a billion short of consensus. Uh, what do you think here? Is this further evidence of the U.S. travel market slowing or something else at stake? No, it was really just a tough comp. I mean, we're feeling very good about our results, notwithstanding the chart behind you. Um, but uh, we basically came in where we expected. We launched our one key rewards program. We got a lot of uh, technical work out the door this quarter. So uh, we pretty much came in where we guided to and uh, and we're feeling good about the quarter uh, and the back half of the year. And we basically reaffirmed our guidance for the back half of the year. So I think people are looking for issues, but uh, we're feeling quite good about where the business is running right now. Well, that's encouraging, uh, but your stock down about 16 percent today. What would you say to those, Peter, who look at falling hotel average daily rates, a decline in airfares, and say that this could be the start of a reversion in consumer spending away from travel and services, perhaps even to goods? Is that justified? I don't think so. I mean, what we've seen is a lot more of movement around uh, geographically and otherwise. So while you see a little bit of domestic softness in air, international airfares are still very strong. You see a little bit of ADR erosion in a few spots, but very narrow. I mean, our ADRs for hotel and vacation rentals were basically flat in the second quarter. So while there is some sense of movement and Asia's opening up and more travelers can move there. There's no evidence that the travelers are generally moving away from spending on travel in favor of goods or other thing, or other items. Yeah, let's talk about cross-border travel. We know that's up. We know there's more Americans going to Europe. You talked about the rebound in Asia that's starting to take place or starting to unfold. Are you devoting more time to these foreign markets? How quickly can you sort of capitalize on this trend? Yeah, I mean, we've been definitely spending more time focusing on outside the U.S., but as you know, we've been on a transformation journey and focusing on building kind of a better mousetrap that worked better for the traveler, better product, uh, better experience, better service. And we're rolling that, you know, U.S. was our biggest market, so we started there, but we're much more aggressively rolling that out across the world, focusing on getting people into the app, focusing on getting them into our membership programs, and focusing on giving them the best experience. So we're definitely leaned into the rest of the world, and more and more is coming back. And of course, our B2B business has a lot more exposure to the rest of the world, and we're seeing great growth there. AI, uh, you rolled out that product just a couple of months ago. What's the early read, and what has customer reception been like so far as we try to understand how this new cutting edge technology can speed up the booking process and make it easier to really customize trips? Yeah, well, I wish I could say right now it was speeding up the process. Right now it's really a discovery tool, and people are kind of experiencing it, playing with it, learning how to figure things out. Uh, we're learning a lot from how they interact with it, and we're enhancing the features of what they can do with it uh, and helping them along the journey. But it's still early days. I think some consumers love to engage with it. Many skip it entirely. But there's a lot more to go on large language models, and I think it's going to play a bigger and bigger role over time. Uh, but it's not a real driver right now. It's really kind of a, a novelty that people are playing with, learning. We're learning from their interactions, and, uh, and that's allowing us to make the product better and better. So we'll see more progression there, but uh, it's early days in terms of driving numbers or bookings or anything like that. We've been discussing what the U.S. downgrade, uh, the Fitch downgrade means for the U.S., from, from corporate America to lending rates to interest rates. How are you thinking about the impact on, on travel and just your business in general? Yeah, I mean, it's a funny thing, right? I, I think we've all gotten more comfortable that we're probably looking at a soft landing or, you know, maybe the recession we all feared isn't really coming. And at the same time, we got this downgrade. I think the consumer, if they don't watch this show or <laughs> shows like it, feels relatively good about thing, how things have progressed. They're still spending money on travel. Uh, luxury travel is very strong. So I don't think, uh, you know, unless it bleeds into common, you know, daytime television and everybody starts worrying anew, I don't think it's really going to impact behavior that much. I think the core basic economic trends are what are impacting it. And so far, the consumer hasn't been hit that hard. We haven't seen a lot of down trading. We haven't seen ADRs erode. And travel demand is high. So I don't think we're going to see it bleed in. I think I don't really understand the downgrade. But, uh, but you know, unless it creates a domino effect, I, I don't think the consumer is really going to react to it.